Hello everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I wanted to make this video about nutritional epidemiology because I intend to talk about particular studies from this genre in other videos. And instead of repeating myself, I'd rather direct the viewer here. I'm not the first person to talk about this, but again, I need this reference on my channel. So what's the biggest problem with nutritional epidemiology? Well, first off, there are two phases of epidemiological research, descriptive and analytical. And the first one is the one I want to talk about. So the descriptive phase is basically data collection, where you identify a disease in a population and gather information about the population's diet and this disease. And based on that data, you generate a hypothesis, such as sugar consumption increases risk of heart disease. The main tool for this data collection, and essentially the biggest problem with nutritional epidemiology, is the food frequency questionnaire, a survey based entirely on memory. It's not scientific. Generally, you are not observing what the people actually eat. This may help explain the discrepancy between what we hear the people in blue zones eat versus what we could observe them actually eating. Check out my videos about Okinawa and Sardinia where I point out such discrepancies. Moreover, the problem with this kind of data collection, the food survey, is that people lie. They are biased. We make mistakes. A sample question from such survey might read, quote, how many times a week in the last year did you eat red meat?" Unquote. How can anyone remember that? What's worse is that these surveys don't ask about exact quantity of the food consumed. And even when they do ask you to estimate the quantity, those quantities are not precise and definitely not measurements, but guesses. These surveys don't ask about all foods or all potential risk factors, especially something like drug use. And even if they did, how likely are people to confess to that? And there are so many other potential risk factors like stress, pollution, exposure to hazardous chemicals, nuclear microwave radiation, quality of sleep, genetic conditions, and other things that are either impossible to measure or rarely, if ever, inquired into. Moreover, asking people what they ate in the last year, even if they did make a very accurate guess, you're not accounting for all the years of dietary history. Prospective epidemiological research, which will resurvey the subjects after a certain period of time, further compounds this problem. What did the subjects eat in all the other years between the studies? Now, food frequency questionnaires are the only practical tool available for large population studies. Thus, should not be completely ignored. If an epidemiological study shows a very strong correlation between a food and a certain disease, more rigorous research and hopefully scientific experiments should be carried out to further substantiate this link maybe also adding mechanistic data and explanations. You know, like we found a high correlation between smoking and lung disease. You had toxic smoke in lungs, subsequent toxin buildup in the lungs, coughing, tissue necrosis, lung disease. Makes sense, right? But something like the supposed relative risk of cancer increase of 18% in people who eat processed meat versus those who don't, is laughable. But if you do want to propose a hypothesis that eating processed meat increases your risk of cancer, where are the follow-up studies showing us how that happens? For example, where are the scientific experiments? If such poor research is rarely, if ever, followed up, is it because its methods and findings are laughable? Is such research not being funded because any more rigorous inquiry into these relationships is destined to fail, perhaps? 
So to use solely the so-called science of nutritional epidemiology that produces very low risk ratio as any kind of proof is pseudoscientific. If the tool you use for your research is not a scientific tool, but really just a collection of anecdotes, and the relative risks that you uncover with this tool are within a range that's generally interpreted as chance or error, how valid does that make your research? Can you honestly call that science? Thanks for listening, guys. Have a good day.